Good afternoon and welcome to our second Lewisburg Speaker Series. I'm your host for today's program, Carrie Kurtz, the Community Relations Manager for UPMC in the North Central PA region. I want to give a quick shout out and recognize our Age Well and Spirit of Women members. We'd like to thank you for joining us this afternoon. And if you're those that are joining us and not a member and would like to be one, you can go to upmc.com forward slash North Central PA and look about our customized outreach programs. I am joined today by Dr. Kyle Hubler, our orthopedic surgeon here in the Lewisburg market area. He'll be joining us in the Lewisburg area here very shortly. With that being said, we're gonna be discussing today's program around arthritis, the effects, what to look for around the joint. We'll also be looking at factors that influence a joint replacement and what to expect before, during, and even after a joint replacement. Dr. Hubler, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. I want you to go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Uh, so my name is Kyle Hubler. I'm an orthopedic surgeon um, here with UPMC in North Central Pennsylvania. Um, I see patients in the Williamsport office, also at UPMC Muncie, and, and very soon here in Lewisburg at UPMC Specialty Care. I'm a fellowship trained surgeon in joint replacement, and I have a special interest in hip and knee replacements, primary surgery, and also revision surgery. Um, you know, so we're surgeons, so we, obviously we do the surgical part of things, but we also treat arthritis non-surgically. And um, you know, our goal is to help your pain, to, to keep you in the game, to keep you doing those things that you enjoy doing as pain-free as possible. Um, and you know, that's, that's why I chose to do this and it's, it's very fulfilling. Great. I do wanna mention just uh, before we go ahead and get started with the full presentation is don't forget to submit any questions or comments below. We'll be happy to answer them during the presentation. So feel free to do that as we start discussing um, some topics here. So why don't we just talk about how do we tell if pain and arthritis are leading to a joint replacement? What are the signs and symptoms of those? Sure. Um, so hip and knee arthritis can, sometimes it can be very debilitating. And most of the time your, your symptoms may start out with some simple aches and pains. You know, your no normal wear and tear that most people are going to experience at some point in their lives. But when the pain in your joint gets to the point where it is interfering with simple things like walking, getting in and out of a chair, getting in and out of a car, sleeping, you know, gardening, going for a walk. You know, some people have difficulty just getting to their mailbox. And when those things start to become a problem, that's when most people decide that it may be time to see a physician um, you know, to, to determine some treatment options of what might be best to help their pain and, and improve their function. Can you talk to us a little bit about those treatment options? What are some things that are available? Sure. Um, you know, as, as your f first visit, we're going to, you know, just meet you and find, uh, find out what you enjoy doing, what's important to you, um, you know, and, and also what things you're not able to do because of your pain. And some people's, some patients' priorities may be different. Um, and depending on that, we will likely talk to you about a lot of the non-surgical treatments, things as simple as staying as fit and healthy as you can. That might mean weight loss, um, certain diets and exercise, and talking about what exercises you can safely do within your comfort zone. Um, certain medications, whether they're the over-the-counter medications or occasionally prescription medications, usually of the non-narcotic variety to help inflammation and pain. Um, we do a lot of injections, you know, whether it's a, a Kenalog injection, cortisone shot, which, which can really be beneficial in a lot of patients. We do things with bracing and physical therapy, all things designed to keep you mobile. Um, and you, when you get to the point, or if you get to the point where those non-surgical treatments are no longer helping, Surgery is the other option. Okay. So then talk to me about what does that journey look like for a patient who's going to go and get a joint replacement surgery? 
when it when it comes time to to need surgery, most of the time it, it is when those symptoms are interfering with your day to day activities, your quality of life. Those non surgical treatments just just are not helping. And we when we make that decision, we've got a little bit of work to do. We want to make sure that you're as fit medically as you can be going into that procedure. So uh, we arrange a visit with your family doctor. There is lab work that we obtain, and there's even a brief visit with anesthesia and a class that is a, it's a voluntary class that is very informative in terms of what to expect before, during, and after your joint replacement at home. Um, it is something that's very informative for your caregiver or your family member that'll be at home helping you as well. And when all of those conditions are met, we you know proceed with with scheduling the procedure and, and we do these things be, because we want you to have a good outcome. What does the post-op look like? What can the individuals expect post-surgery? Yeah. Hips and hip and knee replacements are a bit different and I I think most people would tell you that knee surgery is a little bit more of a challenge post-operatively than hip, the modern hip surgery um, nowadays. Even so, it is a very successful procedure for pain relief from bad arthritis. Typically, your hospital stay is, is one day, and most patients are able to go home the day after their procedure. Uh, and at this point, rather than going to a skilled nursing facility or, or a rehab facility. Um, some hip and knee replacements now are being done the same day. And, and that is a criteria that we like to explain to patients. Um, and in terms of your overall health, there, there are certain criteria that we need to, you know, have you meet to do that. And, and a lot of those patients are, are younger, healthier patients. Um, so typically the hospital stay is, is one or two days. Okay, great. Now I know you brought these two models here with us today. Can you explain to us what we're looking at here? Sure. Um, and you know, these are a, they're not an exact replica, but they're pretty close in terms of some of the modern implants that we use. Um, I think a common denominator with any of the implants is that it is an implant. So there are uh, metals, that um, that the implant is made of. It's an alloy, so there are different metals in it. Um, and then in knee replacements and hip replacements, there's a hard plastic liner and it's called polyethylene. And the polyethylene is made in such a way now that it's very strong. Historically, that would be what would wear out initially causing a lot of issues with joint replacements. And now because of how it's made, it is not uncommon for these implants to last for a long time. Um, sometimes 20 to 30 years. Um, and with the modern technology, it, it may be longer. Um, every joint replacement that's done is kept in a registry. And the registry data tells us that at 10 years, 90 to 95% of those implants are in place and functioning well. At 20 years, 85 to 80% of those implants are functioning well. Okay. So what's a typical time frame uh, for individuals to get back to their daily routine, their daily schedule? I know everyone's a little bit different, but what's, what's an average? Yeah, and a lot of that does depend on your function and, and your health before your joint replacement. And one of the things that we really recommend ahead of time is trying to you know, stay as active as you can within reason um, before your joint replacement. The, the more mobile you are, the stronger you are, the healthier you are when you have it done, the easier your recovery is going to be and the, the faster you will recover. I think that most people after a hip replacement, for example, are walking without any kind of an assistive device like a cane or a walker um, in four to six weeks. And, and we do even have some patients that surprise us and will come into the clinic at their two-week post-op with, without their walker or their cane. Um, 
most people that have a knee replacement are using a walker initially for two to four weeks and then a cane for um, a few weeks after that. Um, all together, hips and knees, I think most people are without any assistive devices by the time they're three months from their surgery. Uh, in terms of, um, you know, return to work and recovery, if you have a labor intensive type job where maybe you're doing a lot of lifting or climbing or, you know, even standing for a 10 or a 12 hour shift at work, it, it may be a full 12 weeks before you're back at doing those things. We also want to, to make sure that you're not overdoing it. Some patients that have more of a sit down uh, sedentary type job can be back to work within a month to, to six weeks. So. Can you tell me what um, you and your team replace uh, as far as joints at UPMC? Uh, I primarily focus my practice on hip and knee replacements. At UPMC uh, in Williamsport, uh, we also do shoulder replacements. Um, my partners do those and we have providers that also do ankle replacement as well. Okay. Let's, uh, we can focus a little bit on the hips. We know that hips do not lie, as some would say. Um, but can you talk to us a little bit about the difference between the posterior and interior approaches when it comes to hips? Sure. The anterior approach is a minimally invasive approach. So it, it is a muscle sparing, a muscle preserving approach. And the benefits of it are that we're able to get patients up and moving and recovering much faster than some of the traditional approaches. We are moving muscles out of the way rather than detaching muscles and tendons that need to be repaired at the end. So it does speed up your recovery uh, somewhat. Now, I think in the end, what is important is also the position of the implants. And it is not quite as important in terms of how you get there, but how those implants are put in. Um, I do, and my partners do focus a lot on the anterior approach because we do see a real difference and benefit in getting patients moving you know, as quickly as we can. There is still some revision surgery that is done through some of the other approaches. And there are indications um, and outliers where the same approach isn't necessarily the best for everyone. So it's a, it's a patient dependent uh, decision based on their case. As a reminder, again, feel free to submit any questions or comments below. We'll be happy to address them um, here shortly. I do see a question came through. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, address this. I'm worried about an infection when I have a joint replacement. Am I at risk? Yeah, so uh, infection is a, it's a, it's a problem that certainly nobody wants to have. And it, it is certainly a big deal. What I can tell you is that it, it is rare. Uh, it is probably something that happens on average about 1% of the time. Um, we do everything that we can to prevent infection in the operating room with our sterile surgical technique, but infection prevention starts the day we meet. So things that we had already talked about, like maintaining, you know, a, a healthy diet, um, balanced diet so that your nutrition is, um, you know, optimal at the time of your surgery. Um, there is a lot of data that heavier patients with an elevated BMI may be at increased risk of infection. And th those are conversations that we have with patients ahead of time, you know, in order to medically optimize someone to lower their risk of infection. Um, if a patient has a history of an infection in the past, there's certain labs that, that we obtain screening type, type labs to, you know, to make sure that there's no active infection anywhere really in your body that, that would put you at risk. 
I think it's important that we talk about our joint commission certification as well as our advanced certification for total knee and hip replacement. Can you talk a little bit about that? I think it's something that is really um, you know, quite special um, and, and it's something that we're very proud of uh, here um, in, in our region. Um, you know, the advanced certification for total hips and total knees, it, it is, it's an honor to be recognized for that because it's a lot of hard work that's done behind the scenes, not just with the surgeons, but the operating room staff, the nurses in the office, um, all optimizing patients to have a good outcome. They are one of eight um, in the state to be, to be recognized for this um, uh, certification and it's something that we're continuing to, uh, to improve on in terms of quality, uh, low complications and, and low rates of infection. We're just waiting for a few more questions coming through. I see one as we speak. Can I go home the same day of my replacement? The short answer is yes, sometimes. Um, that is a decision that we make um, preoperatively. So there are certain patients that may be candidates for a same day joint replacement. A lot of our higher functioning, um, healthy, younger patients may be candidates to go home the same day. There are certain criteria that have to be met to be able to go home the same day. We make sure that your pain is controlled. We want to see you ambulating safely, using your walker, using your cane safely, return of you know, bowel and bladder function postoperatively. And if you meet all those criteria, then yes, it is something that we do. Okay. Another question has come through. Both my hips hurt when walking. Is this arthritis? How can I manage this prior to coming to or scheduling an appointment? It could be, um, but th there are other conditions that can, that can cause joint pain. Um, most of the time we start with an exam, but we're also gonna get x-rays. And x-rays give us a lot of information about the joint. It's certainly possible to have hip or knee pain and have an x-ray that, that looks normal. Um, and sometimes it can be quite painful. There are things like hip bursitis or tendonitis, knee tendonitis and bursitis. A lot of those work-related or overuse type injuries that we see a lot of. Um, the good news is very rarely are those conditions that need surgery and we, we're able to uh, work with you and improve your pain through exercises and physical therapy, medications, um, and, and those kind of non-surgical treatments. Can you tell me what does it mean to have a total, a total joint unit team or mean to a patient? It's so it's not just your surgeon. Um, there is a there is and we're just part of the team. But from day one, you're going to meet a lot of people. We have uh, nurses in our office who are trained to um, take care of you before and after your joint replacement. We have a, a nurse navigator who focuses solely on joint replacement patients. Um, and she does a great job of making sure that patients understand their home environment afterwards, um, what medicines they're going to need. Um, she's their, their frontline go-to person. If they have any concerns about their dressing or their wound, um, the team also includes anesthesia and, and uh, yeah, ways that we're able to control your pain and get you up and moving as soon as we can. Another question has come through from you guys. Uh, what are some signs and symptoms of bursitis? How is that treated? I think it would depend on whether it's, whether we're talking about your hip or your knee. So I, I can talk about both. Um, bursa, and, and I think hip bursitis is probably a little bit more common than the knee bursitis in terms of an overuse 
injury. Hip bursitis is usually pain that is on the outside of your hip. And many times you'll have pain with walking, but you may also notice it if you are sitting for any period of time or riding in a car for any period of time. And those first few steps are, can be quite painful. Sleeping can be an issue. And, and, and some people may not be able to lie on that side. If you're a side sleeper, that, that can be hard. Um, so it, hip pain from arthritis presents a little bit differently. And many times that will be more painful in the, excuse me, the front of your hip or in your groin area. Things like putting on socks and tying your shoes can be difficult because of pain and, and limited mobility. Um, so uh, a little bit of a difference. I think it's also important to let the viewers know how they can schedule an appointment with you in the Lewisburg uh, office here. And so I want to put a pull a little plug in there. Um, you can give us a call at 570-321-2020. If you also want to look at the, off, the different specialties that are offered here in our office, you can go to upmc.com forward slash Lewisburg. And I can go ahead and give you those right now as we speak. We have foot and ankle, primary care, nephrology, cardiology, dermatology, GI, urology, pain management, neurosurgery, and of course, the reason why Dr. Hubler is here today is orthopedics. We don't worry, viewers, we're not going to quiz you on that, but maybe Dr. Hubler later. Uh, but again, if you have any questions, go ahead and submit them now. If not, we will go ahead and close here. But again, if you want to learn more about what we offer here in Lewisburg, again, that is upmc.com forward slash North Central PA. We appreciate your time today. We appreciate the conversation. Um, and we look forward to seeing you guys in September for our third Lewisburg Speaker Series. Thank you, everyone, for joining us and have a great afternoon.